How's it going, people? It's fucking hot as hell. It's like 101 degrees. And yeah, this is a gray shirt, but um, it's not this dark of gray for it now. Yeah. Too hot for hats. <sighs> As a matter of fact, I don't know if I'll make it through this video. But I'm going to give it a try. Let's see, I stopped off at what are the five pillars of Islam? Because I wanted to give that a quality assessment. Instead of, you know, doing it after a long stretch. Uh, actually, it's just the mosquitoes drive me so crazy I had to give up on the, my last video attempt the other day. So, let's see if they'll let me finish today. Um, the five pillars of Islam are the basis of Muslim life. Okay. Good. Philosophical basis, I guess. Legalistic, I don't know. Dogmatic, maybe. Prophet Muhammad is reported to have said Islam is founded on five pillars to testify that there is no deity except God. And Muhammad is the messenger of God to establish the ritual prayers, to give charity to the needy, to perform the pilgrimage to the house of worship in Mecca, and to fast during the month of Ramadan, but only for like, you know, you know sun up to sun down of one of those days, not the whole month, otherwise there wouldn't be any living Muslims today, probably. Because, you know, not everybody can do like JC, you know, 40 days of 40 nights of no water. Shit, man, I think there was an earlier resurrection story, because he had to have died from that shit. <laughs> 40 days and 40 nights. No, uh, you only have to fast. Uh, you, you, you can skip your three meals, but you can pig out after the sun goes down. Actually, sounds festive. Ugh. Mm. Not fond of light beers, but I need to trim down. The testimony of faith. And then we're going to have a little quote here. There is no deity except God. Muhammad is a messenger of God. I can amend to that. Actually, I was kidding. That one doesn't exist either. Except me. Why not? In quote, anyway. Um, this simple declaration of faith is required of all who accept Islam as their chosen way of life. The words have to be uttered with sincere conviction and under no coercion. I think they might want to get back to that. The significance of this testimony is the belief that the only purpose of life is to serve and obey God. And this is to uh, and and this is achieved through following the example of Prophet Muhammad. Okay. All right. Now I wasn't raised in Islam. I was raised Christian, and I remember maybe being six years old and being pressured to go up in front of everybody while they're doing the "just as I am" number. And everyone started to point out that younger kids and me have already done it. And what's wrong with you? But no pressure. But you could actually get hit by a car or a falling piano. <laughs> and you won't expect it. And you'll be a bug splat. And the next thing you know, you're in hell with the devil 
problem you with a pitchfork in the ass. Too late. You got to scream forever now. That's the rules of the game. But anyway, yeah, this whole no pressure thing. I don't know about Islam, but I imagine there's high pressure there if you're if you're right, if you're born a, into a Muslim family. I think you have to be a Muslim. Kind of same thing with Christians, you know. I mean, we're all, we're dealing with individuals, though. You know, I mean, not everybody follows all the rules, you know. And bless their hearts for that, you know. When you're supposed to disown like a kid, disfellowship people, and they decide not to be assholes. And have to be sneaky about being decent. Yeah. Those are my kind of religious folks. All right. Uh, next pillar. The next one. And it's really number two. Prayers. A key element of Muslim life is the obligatory ritual prayer. So you're performing. Okay. Okay. Um, these prayers are performed five times a day just because I guess they don't take for long they wear off fast <laughs> maybe because it's they're so formulaic and ritualistic that maybe one good one from the heart might keep you through the whole day who knows I don't know how this prayer power shit works. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a lot like wishing really hard. A, a, a stylized form of wishing. Hmm. Five times a day. And are a direct link between the worshiper and God. But what is that link? I mean, are you going, hey, you know, uh, you know, Aunt, so, you know, Aunt, somebody, uh, it's got osteoporosis or some shit. Can you help me out on that, God? Can you do that in a Muslim prayer? Or is it more like, I don't know, see, I don't know. Uh, or is it more like, God, you're a great God. God, you're a great God. You're so great. Oh, great if you were here right now I'd do whatever you want even uh it's basically it's symbolically what's being done already <laughs> they don't count because it only counts when you do it for a real entity uh, anyway um yeah that's a direct connection you gotta do it like five times a day I think in some country they have like bell ringers and people that sing verses and all that because apparently you can sing the Quran. When I went to the Islam booth all those years ago, and I had actually told them, I said, you know, I read the Quran a long time ago, and I had, but I didn't really get it. It seemed like kind of a collection of sermons or something, kind of like reading Psalms or something, you know, and it's referring to things that you'd have to know in the Bible, and and I was flat out told by one of the guys, if you did not read it in Arabic, you didn't read it. That wasn't it. You have to learn Arabic to read the Quran correctly. So that was number two as well. <laughs> A bunch of number two. Well, this very personal relationship with the Creator allows one to fully depend, trust, and love God, and to truly achieve inner peace and harmony, regardless of the trials one faces. Not really promising any solutions, but apparently it makes you feel comfortable. I mean, that's how they describe the Holy Ghost in the Bible. Comforter. Like Linus is blanky. I think some people are trying to say, well, it's a prediction about Muhammad. He's a blanket. I mean, a comforter. Charity. I mean, 
an important principle of Islam is that everything belongs to God. Wealth is therefore held by human beings in trust. So we're like squatting on God's property right now. Like a bunch of sharecroppers, I guess. Mm. Wealth is therefore held by human beings in trust. Well, that's kind of true in a way. We all agree that mo money is worth something. And that, and it totally is, because we agree. Obligatory charity, or saka, is both purification and growth. Our possessions are purified by setting aside a portion for those in need and for the society in general. Like the pruning of plants, this cutting back balances and encourages new growth. So by giving your money away, you're going to grow more money. I think you have to do something else besides this magical stuff. Mumbo jumbo stuff. Faith-oriented shit. <laughs> but yeah, I, I recommend charity. I, I, I give to charity. And I'm living on the fixed income. I should be begging for money on YouTube like so many other people. They're just too damn proud. Anyhow, um, charity's good, but I don't like the fact that it's uh, being expected of me. I, I love it when I make somebody else's day. I can't explain it. There's selfish reasons for it, being nice sometimes. You connect with another person and you see the real them for a second. When they're totally stunned that you were just being so cool. And it's happened to me. And I'm all for it. I'm all for altruism and uh, only me. And, uh, just being decent. I don't think we need religion for that. But, you know, if, if it takes religion to get people to do some things right, get out of that. Fasting. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is an essential part of being a Muslim. I should probably try being a Muslim just a little bit. Just so I can lose some money. See that or sit ups, god damn it. I guess I'll just sit up and stare. Uh, Muslims fast from dawn till sundown. Abstaining from food and drink and guarding themselves from destructive behavior. So, none of that, huh? <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> destructive behavior, yeah. Don't don't slam smack during that time. It's really destructive and rude. It's a second time. Ramadan, it's a special time for Muslims everywhere. A time for reflection and greater spirituality. Well, hey, you know, it's nice to gather for any kind of reason that connects people to other people. Just so, uh, hey, you don't feel so alone in the world and so different. You know, there's other people that get what you get. You get it? Last one. Pilgrimage. The pilgrimage to Mecca or Hajjah, Hajj, Hajj, not just Hajj, two days, okay, is a once in a lifetime obligation for those who are physically and financially able. Oh, really? Oh, really? So, yeah, if you're broke, it's fine, we don't need your ass. You get a pass. Now that's decent. <laughs> I mean, they could really blow our minds, you know, with some progressive thinking here. I'm saying, hey, 
And if you're super rich, you got to pay for one person that can't afford it. Pick somebody. Everybody who's got enough has to help somebody else out. Hey, I'm just throwing up shit here right now. I don't necessarily mean that. I'm not a comedy. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it would have blown my mind if we saw something that cool. You know. <laughs> Over two million people from all corners of the globe. Okay, figure it Beats, I won't get taken um, Go to Hodge each year, making it the largest gathering for peace. A noble idea, doing anything for peace. Too bad there have been people blown up during this time and shit by other people that believe this stuff as well. They believe it, but somehow they're coming up with a different idea. Been citing the same book. Hodge provides a unique opportunity from for people from different nations to meet one another. I think that's kind of cool. The rights of the Hodge include visiting the Kaaba and standing together on the wide plain of Arafat, a large expanse of desert outside Mecca. Here, pilgrims pray for God's forgiveness. There's the forgiveness to God. Everybody says, mm. Well, that's how you get it. <laughs> Mill around in a, in a, never mind. Oh. That. <laughs> I hear he's got a magic meteorite in there. That'd be cool to see. Hmm. God's forgiveness in what is often considered a preview of the Day of Judgment. So they got a Day of Judgment and Christians got Judgment Day. The Hajj provides a unique opportunity for Muslims to reflect on their lives and to return to their families and homes spiritually rejuvenating. Yeah, and I'm sure that often happens. Sometimes it becomes something toxic and they turn into a fanatic and maybe hook up with a terrorist group. Now I know Muslims get butthurt if you bring up terrorism. And I think Christians can be terrorists too, and all you gotta be is an asshole. You know, willing to kill people for political means or something. Anyway, I'm not saying all oh, terrorists. I'm saying a lot of terrorists probably recruit there, looking for young, impressionable people, looking for answers. And they don't have the, the tools, because all they've been, you know, shown is, uh, I got it. <laughs> That's the Quran or the storage shed with all my other books. Anyway, that's the five pillars of Islam. And sorry for this video being real shitty. I guess I'm just a shitty video maker. But chime in. Give me some ideas how I can be better at it. And any ideas that somebody might think uh, I ought to take a crack at. Or just. Correct me on things I've said. That's fine, too. I'm not going to block you, but try not to be a total dick. Just as much as one as you think I've been. Anyway, stay tuned. More to